On today's episode, we are going to take a look at what many consider some of the top two working from home stocks. And the first one is more of a fitness business. And this one is Peloton with more people working from home, less people are and with gyms closed in certain states, more people are like are, more people are working out at home. So Peloton has had amazing returns to investors right now after hours after reporting earnings, they are up 10%. The second company is Amazon for your pet. So your dog can go to Chewy.com and purchase whatever they need from toys to food to medicines. Um, obviously, right, I'm joking about your pet going online. But I'm guessing with more people working from home right now, they want to replace their co-workers that are not there. So I'm guessing partnership through uh, a form of companionship through pets have increased right now as well. And it has also provided, Chewy has provided great returns to investors in the past year. So today's episode is going to be broken down into the following. First, we want to take a look at both these companies and their earnings report, some of the highlights. Then we want to take a look at their expected growth and take a quick look at their past growth. Has this company always been growing at these levels? Next, we're going to take a look at some other financial numbers. And finally, I'm going to end with my thoughts. Um, so like always, if you are new to my channel, if you are a long term investor, and if you want to learn more about growth stocks, make sure to hit that subscribe button. To all my returning viewers, thank you so much for the support. It truly means a lot to me. And if you guys ever want to get in contact with me, YouTube comments is the best place. Make sure to hit me a thumbs up and let me know. Are you right now a bear or bull of any of these companies? You can also find me on Twitter. You can find me on my Discord channel. You can find me on Twitch. And you can find me on my website, HoseinNaharo.com. Remember, all the information that I provide here is free, but by no means am I a professional. So all of this is my opinion. So make sure to talk to a financial advisor before making any decisions now that we got that off the bat let's get started with this episode so let's start off with the first one the fitness exercise company and this is peloton interactive ticker pton you can try it in the you can trade it in the nasdaq that is to all my podcast listeners right now this company at the end of the day ended at $87 down 3.75% for the day it did peak at $96.69 um that was early on the day when the bull market was back and running and then we saw a bear market all over again the earnings were pretty great they reported um they reported earnings and after hours this company is up close to 10% um almost reaching the peak of uh, of the day all right, so let's take a look at the market cap. It's right now twenty, uh, close to $25 billion. So if we add that 10%, it's closer to $27.5 billion of market cap. So let's take a look at their earnings. And for those that don't know, let me just start off explaining Peloton and, and the way they collect revenue. So they are, many might know them as the super expensive biking company. Uh, so how do they collect revenue? The first me- method they collect revenue is through sales of actual of an actual physical product, and that's either their bike or a form of apparel. The second way they collect revenue is through subscription. They sell subscriptions that you can that you use their bikes for. Um, they only we're gonna take a look at they they have more than bikes now. They have released uh, uh, treadmills and other levels of bikes as well um so those are the multiple products that they hit but that's pretty much an easy way to understand them so year to date this company has returned over 200 percent to investors so congratulations to all those holding on now let's take a look at their earnings their earnings for quarter four they reported earnings per share of 27 cents which be expectations by 18 cents so this is a company that's growing fast and this is a company with, with that is profitable too to be honest these numbers are very similar to what we saw in zoom um this past earnings revenue was 600 million dollars and that's up 171 percent compared to same time last year that is some ridiculous growth um next we have gross margins of 47.6 percent and this is actually higher than what was expected which was 44.4 percent so even though they have products usually companies with with heavy products they don't have high gross margins but it's pretty impressive that the margins here are almost 50 percent uh, and we can see they have connected fitness subscribers are up 113 percent and they see subscribers rising to about 
2 million 2.1 million at the end of 2021 so they just finished their 2020 physical year as we can see this was quarter four so see we can see already what's amazing 171 percent year-to-year growth that's amazing that that alone is amazing but we're also seeing a profitable company um not something we see uh nowadays with growth now let's take a look at guidance they did give guidance for this upcoming quarter quarter one of 2021 revenue of 720 million to 730 million and this is way above expectations which was 500 million so this alone this alone would be the main not not the revenue growth actually the revenue growth plus the beating of expectations is to me the great the biggest driving force for this company for the full year they also gave guidance of 3.5 billion to 3.65 billion and this is better than the expected 2.74 billion dollars and that's actually pretty impressive so with the 3.6 billion dollars of revenue for this upcoming year assuming this company has a market cap of of 27 billion dollars this right now has a price to sales ratio below 10 and let's actually do the math of what that price to sales ratio is truly like um so we can see right now it has 27.5 billion dollars of market cap divided by let's do that lower end 3.5 it has a little bit a close to eight eight price to sales ratio for a company that's already profitable i'm not gonna lie at first when i first started coming when i first started reviewing this company I came with the mind that I'm not going to like it, but the more I look at it, the more I like it. They do mention that they entered quarter one of fiscal year of 2021 with a backlog of 230 million bike deliveries in all geographies and sales continue to surpass expectations in the first two months of the quarter. So this is insane. This is definitely a crazy growth stock. So now let's take a look at what analysts expect for this company. So right now, analysts forecasted annual revenue growth for Peloton is about 26% annually on average for the next three years. So again, this doesn't mean every year will be 26%. It means um, within the next three years on average, if you put those three years on average, it will be 26 annually averagely. But I think this is, uh, to be honest, if I may be, uh, in my opinion, I think this is undershooting it. I, I believe the actual revenue growth for this company in the next three years, averagely, will be a lot higher than 26.0% annually. Uh, and, and just by looking at the numbers, uh, and we can see, right, this right now is a company that's profitable in this quarter, um, but they are not profitable for the year, it seems. They are expected to become truly profitable um, within the upcoming years, and that's a really great thing to see, right? This is 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 a fast grower, is a profit, uh, it's a company with strong profits. All right, so next, let's take a look at past growth for this company in the year of 2019, which was their last year. They grew 110% year over year, and the year before that was a 99% year over year. So non-stop this has been a growing monster next let's take a look at gross margins in the past years peloton has been unprofitable remember we're taking a look here of 2019 but this is really um this is their last physical year but one thing we can see though is gross margins have always been above 40 percent and that's pretty amazing um they have not been profitable in the past three years um, but i do believe that will change soon now let's take a quick look at this article first peloton did announce a launch of two new items they did a lower price high-tech treadmill and the more expensive bike option with the rotating screen and the re these um these launches were actually supposed to happen earlier but due to the whole demand of bikes they uh they they pushed those those products to a later date and i actually believe that's a smart business move because it means that now those people that bought those bikes now that they bought their bikes they might like the products and now they might be pushed to to go into the treadmill or even a more expensive bike um so now but now they are beginning the the product launch of those two new products one thing that i thought was super amazing is they did mention that right now during this quarter they did not have to spend much money on advertising that mo most of their advertisement is through organic demand due to the strong brand awareness and this has has allowed them to pause majority of media spending through the quarter so that's that's amazing that to me is crazy and everything i'm seeing about this company is just insane at the moment um, at the moment and let me say i am not a bull by any case i'm not i'm 
I currently don't have a position in this company. So this is just me looking at these numbers right off the bat. So one last thing I want to take a look at before we look, um, before we take a look at the second company is their press release. And let's take a look at some of their numbers. I highlighted the important information and, and we can see this company collected 600 and seven million dollars this quarter and out of that 607 million dollars most of it came from from the hardware sales so 485 million came from their co connected fitness segment and this includes like their bikes this also includes their apparel so that's where most of the revenue is coming in from the next subscription and, and that grew 172 percent compared to same that grew 199 percent compared to same time last year and it's about 80 percent of total revenue subscription is the second portion of this company's revenue and that makes up the remaining 20 percent that's 121 million and that grew 99 percent compared to same time last year and right even though it is a subscription for their products they also have in their catalog it's not only it's not only fitness for the bikes or for the runs they also have like lifting workouts so you can use their products for for other other types of work style as well all right so next i just want to take a quick look at their balance sheet right now cash and cash equivalents they have about over one billion dollars of cash and they have marketable securities about 719 so true quick cash is 1.7 billion dollars and that's a lot of cash especially when we compare it to total liabilities their total total liabilities is 1.3 billion dollars but just th this company has no long-term debt this company just keeps getting better and better for me and unfortunately i wish i would have looked at this earlier right now of that 1.3 billion dollars of total liabilities over through close to 400 million is deferred revenue or customers deposit so a true liability for this company i want to say is closer to 900 billion 900 million so this company has enough cash um, peloton has enough cash to pay off its total liabilities and still have cash left over and it's it's producing profits for this quarter and i do believe for the upcoming quarters it will have profitable um quarters as well all right so that's it with peloton like i mentioned right now with the current price increase of the stock and the current estimation of guidance of revenue right now it has about a eight a, a little bit less than eight price to sales ratio which is in my opinion not that bad so the next one we're going to take a look at is Chewy, and this is ticker CHWY. And Chewy right now, unfortunately, does not have the same power as Peloton. Chewy is down 2% after hours and sitting about $58. But year to date, this has returned strong investments to um, strong gains to investors over 100%. Again, the overall market year to date, the SPY has only returned about 3%. So this it these are, are are destroying the market and even after this pullback right if, if we were taking a look before the pull up it was up 134 percent but let's take a look at that pull down um since the pullback it has dropped about 14 percent maybe close to 17 percent after 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 hours so is, is this a buying opportunity let's take a closer look so Chewy right now is unprofitable. Quarter two cap earnings per share were negative eight cents, which beat by nine cents. Revenue was 1.7 billion, which is up 48% year over year. And we might be like, Jose, 48% year over year. We were just taking a look at Peloton, which was up almost 150%. Again, for even this, 40, even though it's nowhere near the revenue growth that this company, that Peloton saw, Chewy is still growing at crazy levels. 48% is not something you see very often. Net sales per active customers were 356, and this was below guidance, which was 365. The company did see an active customer growth to 16.6 million, and Chewy did increase. It's so funny, when I think of Chewy, I think of Star Wars, and now I want to go watch a Star Wars episode. But anyways, Chewy expects revenue to be 6.7 to $6.8 billion. The prior guidance was 6.5 to 6.65. Um, so this is beating their previous guidance and it's also beating the, expect the expectations. So 
So we're seeing again another company with huge growth, and we're seeing one that's growing their expect that's increasing their guidance and beating expectations at the same time. So now let's take a look at the growth for Julie. Julie right now is expected to grow on average annually 18.5% for the next three years. Right now, Chewy is expected to be profitable soon. It's not profitable right now, but it, it does expect to be profitable within the next three years. And again, that's a, that's a good thing. To me, it's not growing fast enough for me. Um, right now, if I was to, if personally, if I was to choose between the two, I think I would go with Peloton right now. But let's continue with the episode. Um, so now let's take a look at past growth. In 2019, year over year, Chewy grew 37%. In 2018, grew 68% year over year. And in 2017, it grew 134% year over year. So this is a, a really strong growth company. Even though it is decreasing, it's still a pretty strong grower. Another thing, we can see their profit margins. So gross margins have gotten better throughout time. In their most recent year, gross margins ended with 23.6%. This was their last physical year of 2019. So what quarter are we in right now? We are in quarter two. So this was about two quarters, two quarters ago when this when this value was meant. So 23.6%. So one thing we're going to take a look at if we want to compare Peloton to Chewy, gross margins for, for Peloton were closer to 50%. So gross margins for Chewy are closer to 23%, half of that. So this is going to obviously affect the valuation so when we take a look at the price to sales of chewy we can't compare it to peloton because right off the bat this is a company that will make less money than peloton and that's what we're this is what things you need to understand when looking at companies next we're going to see profit margins are increasing for the patent two quarters ago for the end of last year their profit margins were negative 5.2 percent so they are getting closer to profitability unfortunately chewy uh, i think even though they reported earnings they're really bad at giving me information that i want to see they didn't give much information on their balance sheet but if we let's take a look at their last quarter's balance sheet to see how how things were doing for this company and if you guys don't know i'm using this great website lazyfa.com it's one of my favorites Chewy right now has non-current debt of about $261 million and they have about $153 million of cash. So normally I don't like to see that. I, I want a, a, a business right now that has that's not profitable to have a lot more cash right now than they do debt. Right now, debt is not that expensive, so it's not too horrible to see this. Um, but but I'm not a huge fan of their balance sheet at the moment. If we take a look at the price to sales ratio for Chewy, it's about 2.96. This is way lower than Peloton. But remember, when we take a look at both companies, Peloton has way higher gross margins, is growing at a faster rate, and it's producing at least a profitable quarter. All right, so now my thoughts. I do think both of them are pretty cool. They're both in, in markets that I do see will continue to grow. But to be honest, Chewy, I don't have a pet, so Chewy doesn't really enlighten me too much. Um, and Peloton, even though I don't work out too much at home, um, the overall numbers that that has, it has a great balance sheet, it has great growth, it has, um, it's profitable, it's expected, it's beat guidance in expectation, it has increased its guidance ridiculous, and it has a, a nice forward price to sales ratio, in, in my opinion. I, I, I do believe Peloton is a pretty cool one right now. And But let me say this. I have three tier stocks. Tier ones are my favorite stocks with highest conviction, with my highest position in my portfolio. Tier three are companies that I believe can be, multi, can be multi-baggers in the long term of things, but right now may not be the leaders or may right now not be in in the proper stage but as they continue to grow they will grow my investments stay tier two are, are the ones in between tier one and tier three let me say this chewy i unfortunately for me chewy would never be a tier one would never be a tier two i don't even think it will be a tier three for me this doesn't mean i ha i'm a bearish in it it's just not a company that would be in my portfolio peloton in the other way though i do believe it has a potential of it wouldn't be a tier one it would never be a tier one whatsoever it has a potential of being a tier three. It might even have a potential of being a tier two. With these numbers, that great balance sheet, I'm really liking it. 
Um, so right now, right now we see it at all time highs and we're seeing it up after hours. If I was to enter Peloton, which I still haven't decided, this is how I would play it. If I was to enter it, I would buy in dollar cost average over time. Um, since it's not a tier one, I wouldn't go all in at once, but it's one that I do believe will be very volatile throughout, throughout the years. So I wouldn't mind buying in sometimes high, buying in low sometimes, but I would dollar cost average. Remember, at the end of the day, these are my thoughts, and I might not do that. I'm still not 100% sure, but if you guys ever want to know what I buy, definitely check out my Discord channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Like always, make sure to get a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Take care, guys. Have a good night, and see you next time.